My name is Barry Kimball. I'm an implementation consultant for Autodesk. Um, I've been with Autodesk for uh, three years. <clears throat> Prior to that, I used to work for uh, Alias before they were purchased by Autodesk years ago. So what we're going to um, basically look at today is some new learning material that we've created um, for the area of uh, Class A surfacing. So class summary, I think everybody's probably seen this already, but we're just going to take basically a look at what, what we've created, what is Class A surfacing, and, uh, and you know, basically discuss that, those two topics. So we should be able to identify some skills that Class A modelers need, um, what it's like to work as a Class A modeler. I'll just kind of talk about that a little bit. Understand the difference between CAD models and Class A models, and understand how you can get access to this new training material. So uh, Class A surfacing, I, people tend to, I always get new people in the classes, so it's always good to give people a kind of a foundation of what, what my feeling at, le at least is on what Class A surfacing is. But it's, it's uh, I would say it's the highest level of surfacing. So there, there's, a, there's a bar that you can set for doing almost everything, right? There's, there's a low end, medium, high end. So in the automotive industry years ago, they established uh, the need for these high quality surfaces to manufacture products that everyone liked. So the thing about you know, making class A data is it's not really the, the, the data isn't the key issue. It's, um, it's a combination of getting criteria into a model and then generating a good model that respects that criteria. That, that is what class A surfacing is. So Class A, is, it's, it's a, a level of modeling, and it, it can be done really using almost any software, I would say. If, if AutoCAD, for instance, had the tools to make the appropriate data, so levels of continuity and things, I could probably use AutoCAD to make Class A surface data. It's not the product. It's the practice and the skill set. So <clears throat> it does require quite a few years of experience. You know, I remember when I started, I always thought, oh, man, I want to do Class A surfacing. You can't start by doing it. First, you've got to learn basic modeling, and then you can get advanced. And, and the only way really to be an effective Class A modeler is to have experience, because you need to know the problems and the situations that you're going to run into on a daily basis. So <clears throat> Class A is always a commonly agreed base set of surfaces between engineering and styling or design. Okay. And the base of Class A is lean and light modeling, so using the least input to get the result that you want. Never overcomplicate things. Alias software is used to design many things. Everything from you know, little kids' toys to, to characters and all kinds of things. The modeling tools in the software, you know, it's not a Class A surfacing software. It's capable of doing Class A surfacing. And the key difference there is that um, people need to be taught, and, and this, is, this has come up over the years and years, and it's really diff if you search for training material on it, you can find some, but not a lot. So um, specifically, oops, specifically um, special training and care by the people who do it is needed to create the data. So you can't just uh, learn it on your own, I guess. And it's all about the beauty and harmony of the control vertices. With the technology we have today and the CAD packages, the surfaces are controlled by control vertices. That's just how it is. There's, there's you know, people might say, well, we have subdivision surfaces or we have T-splines, which really are still controlled by a whole structure. So even if you're building with T-splines, you need to have a good control structure, okay? We use NURB surface data, and the, the main reason why NURB surface data is used still today, I, I believe, is because it works for everyone. It works in all other CAD softwares. It works in the machining software. It works across the board. You can't just throw in some new technology into the mix, like let's say somebody says, oh, Subdivision surfaces are the way to go. It's easy, and we don't have to worry about these control vertices. You do still have a structure that pulls on your sub-D, though, and those need to be good. Problem with using subdivision surfaces is only the design community would be able to use it. You can't get that to CATIA. You can't get that to these other packages that many of the large companies use. So just the, uh, again, to, to, to back that up, 
if I had to give people one rule to, to think about when they were doing Class A surfacing, I would say pay attention to those control vertices. I can open a model, turn the control vertices on, and decide in 30 seconds if I think it's good or bad. No analysis tools are required. And most Class A people would, would probably be um, in the same boat, <clears throat> I believe. And their flow must look good internally into each surface, and from surface to surface to surface, these things must look good, okay? So some skills for Class A modelers. I think great Class A modelers, their, their big, one of their biggest skills is to interpret 3D problems. So that's hard for a lot of people. It's, it can be really hard for people, a lot of times will think that designers, so when I say a designer, I mean an artist, are really great at thinking in three dimensions. I, I'm not sure about that. I think they're great at thinking up a form in three dimensions, but they can't always, and I, I think it might be sometimes because they don't want to, but you, you, they're presented with a problem from engineering and they, 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 just, they just don't want to see it. They don't want to acknowledge it. So a big, a big portion of what Class A modelers can do is interpret those 3D models and then be able to explain that to their peers. Okay, and you need to break those problems down into small individual pieces so that everyone can understand. You know, if you, if you, if you dump a whole bunch of stuff out on the floor, it's hard to make sense of it. And that's a lot of times, uh, a lot too much information um, can make it hard to understand a problem. So good class A people can break down complex problems into simple, concise little pieces so that everybody can easily understand it. And they have to be able to uh, have um, the ability to use sections, create quick 3D models, and, 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 and sketch to be able to communicate between people. And I think, uh, and when I say sketch and draw, I don't mean they have to style the car. I just mean they have to illustrate a point. Okay. Communication. Oops. Yeah, it's, it's, it really comes down to all about communication. You're a, you're a conduit of information from engineering to design. That's your job. And, and really a class A modeler in automotive, the job is to main, like you, if you had to pick a side, you'd be on the design side. You're not on the engineering side. So your job is to stand up for the design and try to force the engineers to do what's required to make the design work, not the other way around, okay? <clears throat> Challenge is what I just mentioned, taking all these engineering requirements, but uh, uh, solving the problem in, a, in an aesthetically pleasing way. So a surface like this says, a surface set that's just beautiful without meeting engineering requirements, no one's ever gonna see it, because you can't make it. So it could be as beautiful as anybody wants, but if you can't make it, no one will ever see it. Okay, so you have some of these uh, little, little notes here, you know, curvature cones, G3. These are just a few things that use to uh, determine the quality of surfaces. But, but the, uh, the big job is combining those two with a nice solution. Design versus class A. So I, I uh, had a bunch of quotes from people over the years, and this was one that I, I think was pretty, it's interesting, and I, I think it's a pretty good quote. Class A is whatever is finished in time for release. <laughs> You'd keep working on something till the end of time if you had, it, people would have you doing things till the end of time if you could just keep iterating. You have to put a line in the sand and then work to that deadline. Otherwise, you would just keep changing for the sake of changing, all right? And it's an agreed deliverable. It's agreed, not dictated. It's agreed deliverable between design, purchasing, engineering, all kinds of people. It's not just the Class A surface person deciding, right? It's collaborative. So here on the left, we have basically a styling freeze model. So at this point, the studio was, let's say, pleased with the form that they had developed. And they got as much criteria into it as they could. But we can see here there's spans. And there's, there's some little waviness and lines, and there's a couple of, of things that are a bit peculiar. And then on the left, or on the right, we have the Class A model. Everything's Bezier. There are, there, there's, 
no extra surfaces that aren't needed. And just to look at a quick curvature plot, which is just an interesting way, I guess, to view this, is that <clears throat> you're really not trying to, to change the form by doing this work. What you're trying to do is improve it and get all the criteria in it. So the styling people might have decided, you know what, as a styling direction, these surfaces can support what we think as a styling direction this should be. But then once what I, what I refer to as the drafting happens, so once you, you start laying all these things out and getting clean intersections and getting proper lead in, you get things that are small, but you get things like this, where this may have been what they wanted this, like, okay, looks good enough. After we clay scrape it and die knock it, it looks cool. But the surface data in the end really needs to look like this. You can see here that the level of continuity right there is very tight. But after clay scraping and, and things like that, it looks okay. This is a proper model with proper lead in, and everything has its nice place. <clears throat> so with all that being said, we, we, for years we've been talking about, at least I have myself, talking about coming up with uh, uh, some course material to teach these basic skills to people. You know, it's, it's, it's like a little, it's been like a little egg that everybody wants to keep. Oh, look, I've got my little, my little prize here and I don't want to share this info. And, it, and, it, and it's a shame because there's enough work out there for everyone. So, um, as a consultant, right, we had, I had to have everything comes down to budget. So we had to get a budget put together and funded. And we got it funded where myself, uh, a lady named Carrie Kingston and uh, uh, another guy from Autodesk, Uwe Rossbacher, got together and decided we would make that material and we, we figured out how to get the budget. We, we started here in Stony Stratford in the UK. This is a little town that, Terry, that Carrie lives in. Uwe was from Germany, so it's a short trip. I had to make a long trip. Um, this is really where we came up with all of the, uh, the ideas that, or, or for what we were going to try to pack into this. We spent one week basically just trying to uh, throw things at the wall on what we felt the minimum skills were that people would need. Okay, and this isn't to be a class A modeler. This is to get the job to learn to be a class A modeler, right? I, we already talked, I already tried to make the point that you can't just start being a class A surface person. You, you need experience. So what we, what we decided to do was develop the content based on a person that might have three to five years experience using alias. They're already a proficient user, they can model, but now they want to get some technical skills so they can make superior data. And uh, so yeah, this is just their Uva, and this is a Horst uh, uh, manager. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just a little uh, clip of, of how we, we started doing this. So once, once we got that done, we all kind of went our separate ways. My portion of it was to create the content and uh, Carrie's portion of it, since I'm not a designer by trade, and she is a designer by trade, she's very artistic, very talented, she is, do, she is doing all the, uh, the graphic design stuff to support the training content that I made, and I'll show that to you as we move forward. But this was basically a little, little uh, my, the office in Novi where I just kind of jotted down some of the specific things. Once we decided on what we wanted to teach people, I had to get more in depth on the exact things that we wanted to teach. The, the format that we decided to do this in was um, basically using a, a, a Camtasia to capture audio and video mixed of me basically teaching this content. This is the little room that I did all that in, 400 and, I think it's about 450 minutes of video. So it's quite a bit. Some are five minutes, some are 30 minutes. So this, this becomes a little bit challenging as we move forward with how to get younger people to learn this information because they, you know, everybody learns differently. So as an instructor, you try to um, explain it one way and then if you observe that people aren't totally getting it, right, you try a different way because everybody can see things from a different angle. And uh, statistics show that younger people like to learn in six to eight minute increments, no longer, or they just stop watching. Well, this is a problem. How can I, how, how can I explain uh, calculus if I only get five minutes to do it, right? And I'm not saying that class A surfacing is calculus, but all problems can't be solved in five minutes, geez. So uh, that'll be a challenge that we'll have to work through as we move forward to try to, I guess, break the videos down into smaller portions, but 
that's a little bit of an extra thing. So one of the things that we decided was, well, what are the five target areas that we think in Class A surfacing, what are the five areas that we'd like to concentrate on? So um, not in any order, but uh, lean modeling. Teach people how to make light and lean models, okay? We wanted to be sure we targeted that. Um, based on experience, we know that using a line is one way to handle light and lean modeling and that surface and blending, fillets and blending are people's biggest areas of, of, of problem. Determining patch layout, so where I put a surface, very critical. Big portion, because there's a lot of people using, we've got very complicated evaluation tools in the software now. I mean, I think almost everything you could want for analyzing surface data. But a, a lot of misconception of how it should be used. A lot of, oh, I use curvature plots for everything. Oh, really? Why? Well, because the guy I sat by used them. Oh, interesting. Hopefully that was a good guy. I don't know. Maybe if he was, maybe he wasn't. But what happens is when you, when you get, um, we've got a little bit of scattered information, I think, out there in the field of Class A surfacing where it's only learned internally at most companies. And unless, and, and, and when you get class A people, you have a whole range, right? Not, not every doctor, you know, doctors, being a doctor isn't pass or fail, you know? I broke my arm once. Do you just randomly go pick a doctor or do you want to research it a little bit and get the best doctor? Or just ask the one guy, oh, I guess he's good enough. No, that's not, it's, not, it's not pass or fail. There's all ranges of being a doctor, right? Just like there's all ranges of being class A surface person. So this is just a clip from um, one of the, one of the um, a pretty simple, you know, we tried to keep these uh, somewhat simple, and, and they do get more and more difficult, but you have a lot of students that come out of schools. You know, in, interesting enough, a lot of the people who learn alias come out of design schools. And who are most of the instructors at the design schools? And I, I think this kind of goes across the board. It's the guy who took the class last year, two years ago. Well, who was the guy before that? The guy who took the class two or three years ago, you know? So you lose some of these things, like the, the, the understanding of the difference between what does is, what is building to a theoretical mean, and should you overbuild things like this, which in years past was a big common practice? This is actually the correct way, because if you take a section right here, and I'm just gonna point since the room's so small, but in the end, if this needed lead in here, Right, so we would introduce another surface. But if we just had this surface and we had lead-in, and then we extruded it, the lead-in would be up here. But we want the lead-in to follow that theoretical intersection line. You can't do that modeling in this way. So, you know, just teaching a simple thing like that. And, and, and another key thing here, two perfect surfaces do not generate a perfect intersection. So, you can see right here, this is a completely clean, it's, a, it's like two radii swept, perfectly clean. So is the top surface, two perfect surfaces. Intersected produce this S-shaped intersection line. That is specifically a no-no in car design, and actually in all design, because to get a line that looks good to, to people as they perceive it, you need, you know, this is just me, me coloring on here, but you need tension in one view, tension in another view, and it can't be S-shaped, otherwise when you get in this view, your mind sees this waviness, and it, it, it may not stand out right away, but that's the difference between high quality stuff and not high quality things, and it's a level of perception that I, I think people, are, it's a subconscious thing almost, that you look at it and you go, yeah, I like it, but mm, there's something wrong with it. This is what designers are excellent at viewing. Right? They have a great interpretation of what things should look like and the character of things should be. So this little example right here, obviously it's simplistic, but we're looking at targeting newer users and just explaining this key difference and that that is the reason why right there, okay? And next, really this, um, this is in the area of, uh, I would say, um, surface layout. So, You've got a nice set of surfaces, and what, what you know you want to do is you want to have this nice, this line, and I can't, I'm not, 
I didn't have coffee today, but it's just hard to keep this nice. This, this line right here wants to be nice and true through there and just vanish that transition out somewhere in here so it goes away. This is a common feature you see on cars nowadays. Might be going away a little bit, but it, it's, it's been prevalent for a while. <clears throat> and how to solve that situation. Um, and there's actually a very, you know, here's the, here's the solution. It's just adding one little patch in here. So it's always the surface layout that can solve these problems for you. Throwing squares and by rails and all kinds of different surfaces at it, you're never going to get to the answer that you're looking for. You need to understand the surface layout, and then in, in there, every design is different. That's the challenge, right? Every design that comes up in front of you as a Class A modeling person requires you to interpret it and then decide on that patch layout. You don't take a patch layout and throw it at a car. The, the car and the form tells you what that patch layout should be. You just have to figure it out. Let's see if we're staying on time here. So, you know, and even at this, I, I have this in here. You know, that little guy right there is in the wrong spot. All right. <clears throat> Analysis tool. So I'm just, I'll show you the whole web thing and we can just click on all the links in there if you guys want to see any of the other videos and content. I'm just, I just took some captures of the areas that I thought uh, to cover that were the most important. But reflection analysis and using the reflection analysis tools in the software. I don't know how many designers I have say, oh, I'll put the black and white stripes on there. Okay. What are those telling you? Well, those are telling me where the highlights go. No, they're not. Oh, yeah, they're black and white stripes. It's, uh, no. Do you know how the tool actually works and what that's doing? It's taking this placard and shining it at the car and wherever your perspective is, but you can't, you can't move it. What you have to do is roll the model around. You, you've never seen this in the real world. How do you know what you're searching for? Oh, well, I know the flow. Well, uh, the flow of something you've never perceived in real life? This is a difficult thing, I think. So, you know, just being able to, and, and a lot of newer, newer users, I think, in, in class A, they can be bossed around by the designers. Now show me what I want. Let me tell you where the surfaces go. Let me, I didn't take your pen and tell you how to draw the car, so don't come over in my area and tell me how to lay out the surfaces on here. If, if the design is good, I'll lay out a good set of surfaces and everything will be fine. You don't need to tell me where to move CVs. I'll handle that portion. Okay. So we go through um, all of, not all, but I go through in, in, in in the training many of the analysis tools and explain the difference between black and white bars, ISO angle, isophotes, and uh, linear reflections, and then show on, on different models um, what's good and what's bad. Okay. Big portion of what Class A people get to do. Designer makes this model. This is what I want. I look at the lines are all what I want. But can you just fix the blending right here between these two surfaces? No. Because those aren't any good. <laughs> Sorry. So, so the best you might be able to do is something like this, right? So if, if you just need to mill something really quick or it's just for visualization, hopefully they don't put any highlights on it right there, that's what you would do. But if you want to lay the surfaces out properly, right? The reason why this model was bad, and I could show it to you, but the designer put lead in at the, back of the, at the back of the door. The lead in stayed constant until he made it flat right at the wheel arch. Well, this puts a weird distortion in there. And then he just made this crazy surface right here that if you see the CV structure, it, it looks like a bomb went off. So <clears throat> the key there is to, to, to it, I kept this exact same slab as he had. I kept this exact same surface. I kept this same exact surface. But I took his lead in surface right here, split it apart from the rest of the model, and then made that lead-in surface track and go up over top of that wheel well. And, you know, two days of trying to boss me around to fix his stuff, or I could just fix it like this in like a half an hour. Don't boss me around. So young people have a difficult time challenging. When you're a, a, young, a young surface modeler and the designer of the car comes up and starts asking you to do things, as a young person, you don't have the skills or the knowledge to say no, right? You, you, he's the boss. With experience, you can have that discussion. So last is something that I think is really the biggest portion that's been lacking, because <clears throat> in Class A surfacing, 
and I've got a slide that I've shown for years and I'll, I'll show it, but <clears throat> to show the difference between the level of detail required to do class A surfacing versus just a decent design model, okay? So for instance, right here, I would say this is a typical design type construction. So this is just something, I had a, a, a designer that had me build this model. And then he said, well, I'd like to do some detailed um, imagery of the lamps and how the lamps work. I said, well, then you need me to make detailed lamps. Well, can't we just, you know, no, if they're realistic. If you want to do ray tracing, you have to have all the data in there. So if we're going to do that, and then I saw an opportunity to use this as part of the training material to teach someone how to create all the flanges, offsets, and all of the stuff to actually construct what this lamp would be like, which a lamp is one of the godforsaken worst things to have to work on as a class A person because you could spend two years building a lamp. The same lamp. I mean, please. But the level of detail here in like this, this, this kind of model, yeah, we've got a gap. Yeah, we have a min radius. Yeah, we got a little flange angle right here. Yeah, we got a radius. There's no underflush. There's always underflush on these parts. It's just how it is. Right? There's no draft on this thing. So, and the draft for this lamp has to come out this way. So once you start putting in, and, and this, this is just a 90 degree flange, which is typically what, at a design level, let's drop some flanges in so it looks real in our renderings, okay? That only gets you so far, right? When you wanna make the real one, it's gonna get really nitty gritty. So you might get a section, and this is where I talked about before, um, sketching. If you can draw it yourself, and put the numbers in as a class A surface person, now you know how to build it. If you can't do that and you just get, like a lot of times what engineering will give you is a encyclopedia of information on what that section should look like. No, I don't need all that. All I really want is the basic stuff for me to do it. You, you've given me too many things. So as a class A person, at least myself, one thing I do is I constantly have a book in front, uh, a design log in front of me because I write everything down on the day I did it as I'm working. Oh, today I did this, that, and the other thing. That way, it's easy for me to go back and say, you know what, these days we decided to do this, this is why we're here. I've, I've had to ask engineers sometimes, now you're telling me this criteria for the fourth time, it's changed a little bit every time, could you please sign this? Because I don't want you coming back and telling me, no, I said four degrees, not three. So uh, a design uh, log can help you with that but right down to all the internals of this part. So class A portion of this isn't gonna include this stuff over here. That's the housing that the engineers do. But what is critical for these, for these lamps, and because lamps are coming so large and have so much character in them now, these lamps are becoming uh, a nightmare to design, but also very complex. Um, you need to, prop, to properly show people what this design is, you need this blackout strip, the racetrack that runs around here, so that you don't see all the flash and all the stuff that's behind it, the glue track that glues these things together. So you need to properly define this little blackout strip that's around here and drop the flange off that's gonna be around it. Because all of those things you see, the attention to detail on these car bodies that they're making now, is it's so controlled and so precise. Um, it, it's why they, you know, the quality right now, I think, on most cars is, is pretty outstanding. <clears throat> so this is a portion, you know, from that that I drew on the wall, came up with this, um, this idea and concept of to, shape, to take a, a newer person and say, okay, if you need to make a, a tail lamp, first thing, understand all the componentry, right? Understand what's a lens, what's a stop, what's a turn, what's a backup, where's their bezel, you know, what are the sheet metal conditions? And then apply this type of thing to that car. And I, you know what, maybe I'll just show really quick, just, uh, or I could save it to the end, but I'll show it really quick. And in, in, so in the end, as you know, a lot of design people, in the end, they have a portfolio that shows, you know, cars they've sketched, right? What's a class A surface person show? It's kind of difficult. It doesn't look very flashy to anyone that doesn't know what you're trying to do. Okay, so people, I think if, if, if for, for newer people, giving them the ability to uh, have an exercise like this where they can, um, 
they can see what's required to do it and then show that they were able to generate the model is, uh, is going to be beneficial and help them, help them get started in the field. So this model has all of that information baked into it and crunched into it. So we have all of these, these draft surfaces that are constructed, and I get into very complex detail um, with, the, with the users on how to, um, how to control this stuff. And oddly enough, if you saw a lot of the advancements that were put into the um, draft tool for this past release of 2016, it was one of the biggest uh, feature changes that we had. Um, I wrote the specification for those changes, and a lot of it was based on making these kind of lamps for a couple years and saying, geez, if you could put a couple of these features in here, it saves so much time. And, and, and luckily there was uh, time and manpower to get that stuff in. So I've modeled here um, a, a lot of this. So now we have uh, the ability now to visualize this in our red rendering product or whatever product you have and see this lamp at a high level of detail that you, you really couldn't see before. A lot of people, what they would do in situations like this is just project a curve out onto this main lens and paint it black. Well, that's not what that's going to look like when it's made, right? So mm, it's difficult. But all of these gaps in here are very precisely controlled. This gap is, let me just turn this lens off so it's a little easier to see. So all of these gaps now are, they have draft. Every one of these parts has proper draft. Every one of the parts has proper offsets. And if we just do a little quick little thing here, you can probably see that everything, everything has, you know, it's, it's perfect, um, it's perfect uh, relationship to its neighbors. If we go to ortho viewing, that's weird. The model must be in, ah, it's in centimeters. Okay, yeah, it was like 0.1 gap. That's kind of, that's kind of small. So the uh, model's just in, in centimeters for some reason. So by the time people are, are finished basically with this course material, they'd be able to generate any kind of geometry like this with complex input, okay? And, oops, I guess I gotta, I guess I gotta click that. And this just gets into a little bit more detail of, you know, there's all the components, this is the blocker, there's your parts, and that's basically, that right there, I would say minus this little piece of surface right here, that is what would be released by class A people. All the other stuff is done by engineering, right? So the portion that's shown right here is what the design community would want to control. <clears throat> I threw this one in here, one, because it's my car, and I think it illustrates a good point of what the real work is on, on doing this kind of stuff. So if we have a, if we have a part here at, that's not started yet, and here it's 100% complete, this portion right here is what everybody thinks Class A surfacing is, basically making all these big, nice forms. Well, that person's never done Class A surfacing then because you get a very small percentage of the people who, who are trusted to build that type of data. And, and most of the work, though, is done up in here, fit and finish. That's what everyone notices. The big form shapes are easy. I mean, I can teach people to make these big shapes. That's easy. What's very difficult to teach is how to control that gap right there with a flare, flaring surface and keep a constant gap with nice radiuses that track one another and all of that stuff, that is where all the work is done. This is just another illustration of what Class A surface work really is. So here's, here's a reflector for, for a, a tail lamp. <clears throat> so from engineering, you get these little chiclets right here. That's called a prescription. So lighting suppliers, first as the class A surface person, you wanna lay out nicely all of those shapes. And I, I don't have this model to show, but to lay out these lines in this view and then in a side view, that was two days of work with a designer, with two designers, with a saddle on my chair. Change it, change it, change it, change it, change it. All right? Then once you get those nice shapes, you supply those nice parabolas to the supplier. And then the supplier makes a determination, well, can we create a prescription that's gonna output enough light to make this lamp okay? Right now it's an iterative process. Then they come back and say, nope, you need to change those a little bit. 
Well, I just spent two days making those. Oh, God, I got to do that over again. All right. So once we finally got down to, okay, here's the, 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 the little, the size, so the designer of the car actually decides what, what are those going to be? Are those going to be long flutes? Are they going to be four millimeter squares? Are they going to be 25 millimeter squares? Once that happens, the, uh, uh, the supplier generates this prescription. So they're little facets that direct the light. And then we ask the supplier, well, this, this one doesn't have any lights in it, but we need this to look like this. So we asked the supplier to do it. And they came back with this. And if you look at this, and you look at the difference between this and this, they're not the same, are they? We get this back from the supplier. And the designer says, yeah, but see, these are all little pillows or something. These are sheer facets with steps. We want the sheer facets with the steps. Yeah, and also, by the way, could you not put little dumb slivers in here everywhere and half? There's three quarters of one shown here and a half of one shown here. How come you don't just shift those over a little bit? Oh, because they're not, first, they're not class A surface people. Second, they're not designers, right? This is, even though, like, you know, people will say, ah, we don't really build those. Well, I can tell you for a fact I built these because the supplier, they can only generate this prescription based on a light. If there is no light, they can't generate it. They need a light and it's going to define all those shapes. All we wanted them to do was take this type of configuration, move it over here, and then nicely lay it out. It wasn't possible. I had to make all these little surfaces. That's what a class A surface person can be forced to do. So it's not a lot of glamour. There's overtime, which is money. You don't get invited to a lot of the parties. <laughs> you don't go to the auto show when they're showing the car. But um, you know, one thing about I think a lot of Class A people, they take a lot of pride in their work. So if I have to do that, and that's what's required to make this look right, OK. What, what we'll do in this training material is show you an easier way to get this translated over to here using a global modification tool. So <clears throat> just, I just wanted to try to get that perception out there that, oh, class A surface person, so you do the bodies of the car. <laughs> yeah, the first like, month of the program, we did the body of the car. The next two years, we spent doing this kind of stuff, which is no fun. Access to this content. So how can, we get a how can, uh, how can you or, or your colleagues or people that you talk to get access, I guess? One. Customers that are on EP support have access. Okay. The other route, I would say, is Autodesk Consulting. We've created the class. We have the content. We'd be more than happy to come to your facility or, or our facility and uh, put on a five-day course to take uh, three to five-year experience users and teach them all of this, all of this uh, type of information that I've been showing. So I wanted to show a couple more things. Um, and kind of uh, to side note of, of Class A's, Class A surfacing doesn't just ha have to happen on cars, you know? All of these kinds of products, right, and, and uh, also have Class A surfacing quality. Shoot, Kevin, go ahead. Priority, I believe it's called. Yeah. <clears throat> so, but, but Class A surfacing, is, is just a term for a high level in a, in a, in a, in a thought through process of surfacing something. So we've been doing a little bit of work um, with a, a, a partner that we have. <clears throat> we probably won't, actually we can mention, this is a, a, a cylinder head from a company called Kalita Motorsports. Kalita Motorsports is a, a drag racing company. They're a drag racing team that competes in NHRA drag racing. So they have funny cars and top fuel dragsters, which are the two highest end areas of racing. And Autodesk has a partnership with them uh, for machining and doing some other things and, and for software use. And we get our sticker on their car. You know, it's pretty cool. Um, so top fuel dragsters is sub four second quarter mile dragster, so very fast cars. This is a cylinder head, and they buy these cylinder heads for $6,000, one cylinder head. 
They need two cylinder heads for a car, and they need about 25 pairs for a weekend. So that's a lot. So they buy these from this company, AJPE, who's the like, preferred supplier, I guess, or the supplier. So they scanned one of these, and they, want, they have all these machining centers. They have great Haas machining equipment, and they want to you know, make their own. And they see an opportunity inside some of these ports to make some changes that will be very tiny to the naked eye. You might not be able to see them. But we're going to work with them on some CFD things and stuff to, um, to try to make some improvements to the flow patterns in these. But what do they need? Well, we need surface data for that, that piece of geometry inside there. Now, a lot of people wouldn't think that's class A surface work, but this, you know, it's like nature, right? Uh, the smoother these things are, and the better that they can flow, the better more power this, this thing will make. So we want to make these uncontrolled features. We want to make these kind of nice and polished. So, I've been working with these guys, and I don't have the model done. And in, in, in Alias, we, we use Inventor, uh, one of the guys, to, to do the rest of the head. Um, my task was um, to do this cylinder uh, combustion chamber and these ports. So I, I'd only started working on this a, a little bit ago. So they gave us a few things to start with. One, they gave us their, 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 their base, I would call it, their base CAD data. So this is what they, this, this is what they got. Um, I won't mention the supplier, but this is what they got from someone as surface data for this model. And if you look at this kind of surface data, um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy uh, the number, these, each of these is its own surface. All right. So you have this little chiclet pattern that goes on inside of there. How do you modify that? What if we wanted to change that for CFD reasons? How do you move those? It, it's not really possible. I mean, you, uh, Every single one has a bunch of control vertices. I mean, look at this for crying out loud. Every single one of these, what, are you going to start moving CVs? Come on. You're a madman if you're going to do that. So <clears throat> I, I, I just took this upon uh, myself as, a, as a, just a, a way to show how class A, surface, class A surfacing can have um, its place in more than just car bodies, right? It can, be, it can be used for a bunch of places. And the technique specifically that we, we teach in the class are what would allow you to do what I'm just going to show you that I did. So the first step here was, wow, the scan data is over there, and that is where the head is in 3D where they can machine it. I got to get that scan to exactly match up to that data. So you can use some surface planes, and actually we go through that as part of the training. And then I got the scan relocated so that the scan was basically relocated so that it's right on all the geometry and it's perfect. You can see it shimmering right there because it's face to face, all right? And then, you know, I, I, I break that down a little bit and uh, <clears throat> split the scan up so I only had the internals of that. Did a little mesh work so that um, I repaired some holes and things in here. So now I have the basic data that I want to try to, um, try to, try to create. So, the intake side, I just used some, some and, and maybe it might be a little better to uh, show the original ports first, just to show you. Uh, so this was the surface data for the original ports. So again, if they wanted to modify this and iterate to go through some CFD analysis, well, what, do you, what do you do with this stuff? It's impossible. So, and, and I actually wonder to myself sometimes, how does someone even dream up making a surface like that? It's, uh, it's a little beyond me. But I just take a, a totally different approach to it, right? I make a control frame. I make a control frame that goes from here, and it's going to go up to a circle. So once I, once I get these pieces that make this structure around this thing, that cage right there is going to control where all those blends go. All right? And at, at the top, I just make those those four points or those surfaces, if I untrim them, they would make a square right around this circle. So now I know that when I transition from this radius at this end to be a complete circle at this end, I can explicitly control how that gets from one to the other. Because sometimes what you want to do is um, 
make it get smaller before it gets larger, that can create vacuum. These cars pump so much fuel, I don't, I probably haven't seen, you guys probably don't, I don't know. I'm into cars and drag racing, so. The, um, oh shoot, it's, is it time to go? No, we still got time. So basically nitromethane has, it's, it's nitromethane, it has oxygen in it. So this is basically a, a, a fluid flow. It's not, there's no air mixing. These cars pump so much fuel, it's like a fire hose that comes out of them. So uh, being able to control those shapes is gonna be very important for these guys. So the other side I made like this, right? So same principle. And it's this simple principle of, well, don't just start trying to surface all of this stuff. First thing I do is I make a nice, make a nice slab here, and then that slab will control my radii, right? and it'll be very predictable and modifiable with as few a CVs as I can get, all right? This is where, like, you can use some class A principles here, but then myself, I violate some of them, right? Because this, this form is more organic. I don't really have to worry so much about these explicit control vertices because they can be out of place like this on a form like this. On a car body, that wouldn't be allowed. But for a form like this, I, I think it's, it's certainly okay. And I, I just use that to match that scan data. All right, so it's a, um, it's just, a, I guess, a, an application of using Bezier surfacing and all of these other, because all of these surfaces are Bezier, using all of this, uh, uh, the techniques that we teach to generate uh, a clean model like this, okay? And I think the last, this is a, um, this is another interesting, so this was from a customer <clears throat> that wanted to know well, I just want these blends fixed. So, you know, you look at this and, they, and they, they gave me a bunch of stuff. They said, you know, here was, here was their guide. Keep everything, just fix this little area right here. I said, really? Is that what you think the solution is? Just throwing more surface at it? Okay, so I, I, I effectively did it because, you know, I like to do what, what people ask. So if we look at, at the original, this is their original model. And as a class A person, right, you, 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 the techniques that we try and teach too make it predictable for everybody else that's working with you. So if I give, if I give uh, uh, Kevin my model and Kevin's working along the same guidelines and the same techniques that I used, he's gonna look at my model and go, cool, I see how you've laid that out. You've got nice control surfaces. I'll just use those, start modifying. When you get a surface structure that looks like this, I start to wonder to myself, well, what's that surface doing there? Is that supposed to be there? Oh, wait, why is that there? And then if you untrim this surface and measure between this surface and that surface, it's zero. Why do we have that surface? I don't know. The person was just sitting there and they you know, got themselves in a pinch, they wanted to get it done and they start throwing surface. This is a common practice that I see. And then what's this little guy? Oh, he's a big, so you trim this out and put that, you know, you can't make sense out of this stuff sometimes. So the, modifi the modified surfaces that I generated look like that. So basically, I'm using the same geometry at zero, zero, but what I did is just blended it differently in this corner. So, you know, a few other things that I tried to point out to this individual, you know, we work to theoretical intersections to control the fillet. The fillet follows a theoretical. So I, I asked this person, you know, are you sure you have to have that surface right there? Because if we look at this, it's kind of, it's not a fillet, it's kind of weird. I don't know what you're, where you're going. You have the tangent line going one direction and these going the other direction. That's obviously gonna force some weird shapes in this corner. And then when you just start looking at some of these guys, they just get a little crazy in here. So, so I kept this surface, I kept every surface that they wanted, and I only modified these in the corners. Um, and the results, I think, are, are decent, but so there was the previous model, and then this is the modified model. All right, so when, when a person gives you, you know, and this is another case where um, new users, if a person says, I want this fillet, and it's not a fillet, because it's biased to one side, so they can't really, it's a blend. But if they want this short lead in on this side, and then they go ahead and they put very, like I just showed you over here, very short lead in on this side, 
that is going to have to resolve itself with short lead-in on both sides. That has to go somewhere. It doesn't magically disappear like he had his arrow pointed in the corner. I just want this all softened. No, you drove all those shapes into the corner. You can't fix the corner. You need to get out of the corner and fix, and fix the, larger, um, the larger issue that we're looking at here. So that's why you see this tight highlight track its way up around that corner. If you softened all this, it would soften. But a lot of times as a class A modeler, someone might come to you and say, I just need you to blend this. So just do the best blends that you can put in here. Okay, if that's what you want me to do, I'll do it and I can make improvements, but you're still gonna get, you know, when you have this very sharp intersection, you know, this person kept asking me, well, can't we smooth this out? Yeah, let's add the lead-in into here and then it'll smooth itself out. Well, no, I have to keep that. Well, then you're gonna get into a little situation. So you can see that it is better and we've got a higher, these surfaces are curvature continuous. Just, they're only curvature continuous over a half a millimeter. Right? So you can make, make some um, changes to some of those things and blend it a little better, but you can never get 100% um, when you're using someone else's, else's model. Okay, so that's, um, does anybody have any questions? Okay, so feel free to contact me if you're in the class. You should have my email because it's on there. Um, if not, you can get with me after. But yeah, contact us at Autodesk Consulting if you'd like uh, to get access to some of this information and we can work on that. Or again, enterprise support people. I think uh, one slide I was supposed to mention, you can go to this, there's recorded sessions, so this one will be on there, along with any other ones that you saw. And I uh, appreciate everyone's attention. Thanks a lot.